بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم له ملك السماوات والأرض يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير هو الأول والآخر والظاهر والباطن وهو بكل شيء عليم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم مصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وآله أجمعين وأصحابه المنتجبين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم ومنكر فضائلهم وغاسب حقوقهم من الآن إلى لقاء يوم الدين In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate Respectable audience, distinguished listeners and viewers Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Once again Thank you very much for joining us and listening to these episodes which are exclusively produced for those viewers of ours who are seeking the truth. So respectable audience and distinguished listeners, today God willing we are going to talk about the divine decree and destiny and it is relationship with our will, with, our, with the human's will, with the human's free will and free choice. You know that in the previous session we talked about the divine destined decree, but due to its importance, due to its high significance, the second episode is also made exclusive that we have to talk about this important issue we have to focus and concentrate answering some of the doubts and talking about is uh, it is impacts on our daily life so respectable audience and distinguished listeners by destiny or divine decree what is implied that is that god has decided the limitations, the dimensions, the time and space, the quantity and quality of all the phenomena. Once again, by destiny and decree, by destiny and divine decree, it is implied that God Almighty, God the Supreme, has decided the limits and dimensions time and space, quality and quantity of all the phenomena. And the philosophers and the theologians, the most important one of them, the most important theologians and philosophers have divided divine decree and destiny into two epistemic and objective ones. It means that Almighty Allah's knowledge to the creatures prior their creation and after their creation, that is called epistemic decree or epistemic divine decree. Almighty everything that occurs in the universe that is written and that is saved in Almighty Allah's knowledge. Almighty Allah has knowledge of everything even if a leaf drops from the branches of the tree again this dropping of a leaf is 
written and is preserved in the preserved tablet in Almighty Allah's knowledge. We have to keep it in mind that nothing escapes for Almighty Allah's knowledge, or Almighty Allah does not escape anything. Every occurrence, every happening, every event, every incident that is written, that is in Almighty Allah's knowledge. Almighty Allah has knowledge of all these happenings and incidents. And secondly, or the second categorization of the divine decree is the objective divine decree. It means the materialization and the actualization of that knowledge that is called practical or objective divine decree. For example, when something occurs and it is due date, that is called practical or divine objective divine decree. Another categorization we made that was about certain and uncertain divine decree. We have to be clear, we have to be precise in this respect too. Sometimes Almighty Allah has divine decree, but that is uncertain. Sometimes the decrees Almighty Allah has produced, they are certain. Nothing can change it. But those uncertain decrees, those uncertain destinies, they are changeable, they are subject to change. For example, if the human beings do some good deeds, they will change. As it was mentioned, one's span of life, one's life can be extended due to his best deeds. For example, he had been very much submissive towards his parents. Since Almighty Allah likes, Almighty Allah desires to have a thing from his servant that he has done what he has revealed. So Almighty Allah extends his life. So it is a blessing. And for sure, Almighty Allah recompensates. Uh, Almighty Allah retaliates. If a person remains belatently oblivious towards Almighty Allah's commandments, Almighty Allah does retaliate even in this world. For example, those who have been negligent, negligent or those who have been heedless of their parents, they have short life in this world too. Because Almighty Allah does not like those who disrespect their parents or those who misbehave or mistreat their neighbors. Almighty Allah does not like these figures. So they will not have a very lengthy life. So respectable audience and distinguished listeners, these were a very brief revision of the previous session. We talked about the divine destiny that were categorized into these two categories. First, epistemic and objective divine decree. And the second, certain and uncertain divine decree. <laughs> So now, let me touch some of the doubts that have been raised by some of the theologians, such as, for example, the Asharites. You know that since they have gone extremely on the side of proving unity for Almighty Allah, proving oneness, even they have negated or they have denied the very basic principle of cause and effect. According to the Ash'ari's theologian, everything, uh, whatever you see, that is Almighty Allah, that is Almighty Allah's power, that is Almighty Allah's blessing. In another word, the, the Ash'ari's theologian do not believe 
in the philosophical rule and law of causation or causality. They do not believe that, for example, fire burns or fire produces heat, or with drinking water a person's thirst will be quenched. They say that Almighty Allah makes him quenched, Almighty Allah produces heat. These ordinary cause and effects are not very much effective. They do not have real effectuality, they do not have real efficacy. Uh, the Shi'at's difference with them lies in this very subtle and delicate point, in this very decisive point. The Shi'ats believe that, for sure, Almighty Allah is the source of his strength and power. But whatever he designates as a cause, that will also be playing the role of a cause. Indeed, the fire burns. Indeed, the fire produces heat. Indeed, a cold water would cause and prompt one's thirst to be quenched. Why? Because Almighty Allah made such objects like this, with such properties, with such characteristics. And due to this, it seems rational that a person should refer to the physician when he gets ill. He should not say so. He should not say that, okay, I take recourse to Almighty Allah and Almighty Allah should cure me. Yes but on condition that you have to take the preliminary steps for going for the treatment. So this is very much important that Almighty Allah's oneness, Almighty Allah's being the supreme creator, being the all-powerful, it does not necessarily mean that the rest of the effects, the the effectuality of the rest of the causes should be ignored and should be negated totally. Yes, we also believe that their effectuality also needs Almighty Allah's permission. But Almighty Allah has given us this law and rule that you have to go, you have to refer to the physicians. You should not undermine the tangible and feasible causes in the pretext that everything should be in the hand of Almighty Allah. There are verses that say, فَالْمُدَبِّرَاتِ amra. It means there are some executors who apply Almighty Allah's will in the earth. Dear listeners and respectable audience, there might be a problem, there might be some doubts about free will and free determination of the human being. Though we believe that free will or having the capacity to decide to go or not to go, to get involved or to avoid involvement, all these are, all these are something self-evident facts. We find these facts by our whole existence. Once again, I should emphasize that free will and free determination is something that we can find it wholeheartedly without being in need of a reason. We find it by our conscience. There is no need. But there are some people who hesitate that. For example, they, uh, pose, uh, they pose some doubts about the free will and free choice of the human beings. They say that since there are some tendencies, there are some inclinations within the human beings, so sometimes a person might go towards committing sins, or a person might go towards uh, doing good deeds. This committing sin or doing good deeds, that is not a, a in their control. That is not coming out of their volitional acts and practices. That is coming due to those tendencies and inclinations. They say that none of them is due to their free will. None of them had free will and free determination. They pose this problem and this doubt. One thing that should be mentioned in their response, that for sure we also believe that there are 
various or variety of tendencies and inclinations within the human beings. But it does not mean that they should be forced to do good deeds and to do bad deeds. No, again they have this uh, volition, again they have this will. Whatever they will, whatever they decide, again they will be the final, again they are the one who produce the final verdict. Again they are the one who finished who says, yes, we have to go towards these acts or we have to go towards these acts. It means, in another word, the existence of tendencies and inclinations within the human being does not necessarily force the human beings in a specific direction. They have this uh, power to decide. The decision-making is at their hand. Again, they can say yes or no. The final say is again in, at the hand of the human beings. Whether to go to the nightclubs or they have to go to the mosques. Whether they have to, whether they have to go to the stadiums or they have to go to those charity organizations. The human beings have this free will and this free determination. The choice is theirs. لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المؤمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله Another theory or another problem that they raise that is that do not believe we do not believe in humans free will why because they say humans personality is the product of the environmental and social circumstances one's background one's social and environmental place and position affects human's personality. If he is uh, grown in a family where everything is prepared, that makes a big difference with one's family where his father is fully in need of his basic needs. It means a poor and an affluent circumstance would affect human's personality. So his free will or his free child does not have any place in shaping his personality. It does not have anything to have to establish the makeup of his personality. Again, we say partially the, socia the social, familial, environmental position and background does have effects on human's personality. But again, we do not believe that their effects should be totally and 100% compulsory or obligatory in a manner that they should not be able to flee from these environmental effects and impacts. No, they can flee. They can have their own decision. They can make their own decision. They can have their own free determination applied in any circumstance. Otherwise, we should not have any person from bad families to be a good person. Or we should not have bad persons from good families while, in the, uh, while the case can be vice versa. يخرج الحي من الميت ويخرج الميت من الحي. One of the meaning that the interpreters say about these verses is that sometimes there are good couples, but their son or their daughter is not a decent personality. 
and vice versa. Sometimes the parents and the couples are extremely stupid people or they are foolish people. But their sons, their daughters are extremely well and well educated, well brought up and well mannered. This case explicitly manifests that every individual enjoys freedom, free will. He is not under the impression of those social, environmental backgrounds and circumstances and conditions. Another question that raises that what is the impact and the effect of divine decree in humans life. There are many, but the most important one of them is that when a person gains huge success or when a person achieves triumph, he should not be proud. And when a person fails to achieve his goals, then he should not get hopeless. This is the most important effect of the divine decree. Because when he achieves success, he should not believe or he should not assume that all what he did is of his own. No. If he goes back, then he will reach to Almighty Allah. And he will understand that it is Almighty Allah that has granted me all these blessings. I was not there. Almighty Allah made me appear in this world. And secondly, this success should not be a means of pride or arrogance and boastfulness for him. Because he would think that if Almighty Allah has given this blessing to me, so I have to make the best use of these blessings. For example, Almighty Allah made me financially able, so I have to make charities, I have to donate, I, I have to make donations, I have to assist my relatives. And of course, if we did, لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ Almighty Allah says, if you remain grateful, if you could use my means on, the, on it is apt in wise places, for sure, لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ I would extend the limit in the size and the scale of my bounties and blessings to you. وَلَإِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ if you remained ungrateful, if you become excessively arrogant and boastful, if you got extremely proud of this worldly success, and if you remain ungrateful to Almighty Allah, that what is this blessing that you have given to me? Almighty Allah says, Inna adhabi la shadid. For sure, my chastisement would be extremely painful. So, coming to the topic, what is the effects of believing in divine decree? The most important effect and impact of this belief or this concept is that it keeps us in a moderate way. It creates some certain, a kind of equilibrium in our life. We should neither get extremely hopeless due to some failure, and we should not extremely get arrogant and boastful due to some success. It makes us balanced. It balances the explicit product of believing in divine decree. So, respectable audience and distinguished listeners, this was the last point that we have mentioned in the God with the divine decree. There is a very, another important point that would be left untouched, that is the concept of Bada, which means lexically, Dhuhur al-Khifa. 
So since we are running short of time, we cannot touch this in detail, but in a, f in a session, inshallah, we will deal with this important topic, uh, which is one of the exclusive concepts of the Shiites. That means that our actions, our good and bad actions, can determine our future, can determine, can shape our future, our destiny, our next life. May God bless you all, dear listeners, and may Almighty Allah help us that we have to determine, we have to define our future, our after life in a manner that should achieve Almighty Allah's pleasure. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma anfa'na bil ilm wa zayyinna bil hilm wa jammilna bil afiyah wa karimna bil taqwa inna waliyya allahu alladhi nazzal al kitab wa huwa yatawalla al salihin